right, what's going on, UBA? It's the voice of choice. Sean Dye facing right here, and we are at Jersey Lanes right now, getting ready for a best of seven contest for the Northeastern Welterweight Championship. And I'm standing here with both the champion, the sniper himself, Julio Sicario, and then, as you know what it is. Oh, absolutely, baby. You know what it is, baby. Mm -hmm. We'll be day. We're here. We got a job to do. Got to take out another victim and get uh -huh. myself battle bow ready. Representing the. Representing the tribe, baby. Tribe, baby, tribe, all day. You already right. know how that goes. I do, I do. You already know how that goes. And, and, um, and to get to this point, you were defending and successfully defended against Mr. Alfonso Israel. Yeah, last last time we bowled over at Hudson. Uh, Alfonso's a tough customer, man. And everybody that does this, that bowls here, they're all tough customers. So it's no, no easy feat just to get to a belt title match, to win one, to hold on to one, and try to keep it on and go against the South champ if we get this done here today. Ooh, grinding for the green. I'm grinding for the green, for all sure. All right, all right, man. Do your thing, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, and to my right, I got the challenger who defeated Anthony Cockrell Jr. to get here to this point. Let them know who you are, it's Mr. Morales. What's going on, baby? What's going on, South Jersey Storm? We in the building. Uh -huh. You know, everybody in this league is tough. There's no ducks here. The sniper here wants another victim, but he's gonna have to prove that to me. Ooh. So we gonna we we gonna get it in, and we gonna represent this title, and we we gonna give it a good game today. So you know, Jersey Storm, my boy Roscoe in the building. Okay. Let's go. All right, let's go. So you said you ain't worried about no snipers. You right now you got. Gotta prove that to me. Huh. I'm not worrying about his rifle or his bullets. He gotta prove that to me. Oh man. Yes. Ain't no fear over here. He gonna have to prove that to me. No fear on here. No, is Not it? Even a little bit. Huh? Nope. He's a good champ. Holding it down since October. I'm going to give him props. And he's from New York, just like I am, so I ain't no hater. But, you know, he's going to have to roll me over. He's going to have to do what he got to do to get through me. Oh, I see. You certainly not a quiet storm here today. No, it's a tornado behind this. Yeah, you know so I mean? It's a war going on. In so, the, so the tribe, I hope he buckled down his buildings because I'm coming. You know what I mean? Let's go. Let's hey, you know, already know what it is. Welterweight action, 199. And listen, the trash talking is still fine. Let's go. Let's get it. That's right. That's right. We 199 under. We talk like we 230. Sparing over here. You hear that? Yo, oh, try, baby. Listen, Sicario putting it down right now. Best division in the land. Best division in the land. You want excitement? Sure. Yeah, you can watch those 230 guys who just strike, strike, strike. How about making some splits? What you're going to see here and what you are witnessing here at Jersey Lanes is a best of seven contest happening, um, defending on lane 25. We have Julio Sicario Hernandez. And, and right here is going to be a pinpoint. Yo, yo, pinpoint example of what's going to have to make you a good welterweight champion. Spares. Spares are there. These, listen, heavyweight may be the pioneer of the strike, of the strike fest, but over here is what you need to do is spare. This is right here, the spare foundation. This is the spare spectacle. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Dansbury indeed made a lot of those today. And congrats to him, and congrats to you. And let's see a great match between you and Anthony Morales. And we're here for the unpredictable stuff right here. See, you can get you can get strikes all day, but over here you are guaranteed for some action. You want to see a spare clinic? This might be a, a beginning of the spare clinic. Hey, listen, both opponents start out with an open. <laughs> and let's see, Mr. Morales is up. And two shots going high very early, like I said. The, the welterweight division, 199 and under, is a display of grit. Yes, you can see strikes with the other heavyweight divisions. Hey, anything can happen in the welterweight division. Shout out to all the bowlers 
that are 170, 180, 190, and grinding to have moments like that. Beautiful conversion by Anthony Morales. Covers the spare, and I'm telling you right now, he is ready. Matter of fact, he's even battle bowl ready. Are you? I know I am. And speaking of being, speaking of being ready for battle bowl, we're going to see if this strike right here sends a message. And nope, might still be a, a spare spectacle, potentially, as it should be. Spares are, are the, the very essence of the game. You know what I'm saying? Strikes I like, but spares pay the rent. You know, four, seven leave. Goes up, turns the corner, and spare converted. Spare converted by Julio. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Morales from the South Jersey Storm, starting out with an open, but then second frame, sparing it out. And speaking of out, uh-oh, Julio talking loud and being proud about it. He got the first strike, and right now, it is on right now. He is grinding for the green. Look, just because this is welterweight division doesn't mean you will not see strikes. They will be striking too. Matter of fact, we might see a little response. And oh, see, I'm telling you, you never know. People think, people think, oh, I'm gonna see spares all day. Trust me, you're gonna see some exciting bowling. Let me tell you something. A lot of y'all can relate to watching to this, so, and some, and be some of y'all that sway at 2:30, but only in certain hours of the days in certain houses. No, these guys grind out, and they are their averages. They do what they do, and they do it for their crews, their respective teams. And right now, we're still going to see if the storm comes down. And no, the storm is a little high tide, and that is a high tide. And speaking of high, it is also a 4-6. Tried to generate a little speed. Kicked it out extremely early, you know, and the ball bit. And, oh, my goodness. Let me tell you something. You are not going to see a 4-6 made that often or, or even being close to being made like that. So right now that's two opens for Chino himself, Anthony Morales of the South Jersey Storm, looking to try and shoot his shot and try to make his way to being a welterweight champion. And with moments like that, uh, looking like two straight up middle fingers right now, got the long distance relationship itself, the 710. Let's see, let's see if we can get a connect to flight. Let's see if we can get a little ricochet on here. Are we a pinpoint sniper we're going to see? And still can't seem to snipe out that 10 yet. Oh, he just grazes the earlobe. So how appropriate that we talk about an earlobe because he's going to Van go ahead and try to get this done. Yes, that was horrible. This match was originally supposed to be at Linden Lanes and a little rescheduling. And like a true champion, like a true champion. Nothing like this. Oh, so so it seems that we got a little even exchange. We got we got the champion who right now is in a, in a great relationship with the left lane. The right lane, mm -mm, not cooking for him every night. <laughs> but quite the contrary, challenger likes the right lane. That's a, 
Let's see if we can pull a little Monopoly over here and just strike on the other man's lane, too. And, oh, nope. Mm -mm. That left lane is faithful to the champion right there. Exactly. It's loyal. <laughs> and let's see if the challenger is loyal to making his 10 pin over here over on lane 25. And it's going, it's going, and it's uh, GPS did reroute. That's all right. That spare attempt does not spell the end. There is a whole lot of game left for both the champion and the challenger. So this is what you have right here, a boxing match. Who's landing shots, who's missing shots. And I get, wow, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, 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 did Julio just track on the right lane? Let's see if the left lane agrees with it and gives him a strike too. And Julio up. Julio likes the shot, gets it out, and oh, right there, a little, a little, a little Webby action right there, a little Pete Weber there. Got a little clap. It was, it, it, it was a quiet clap. I thought it was gonna get a louder clap than that. That's that's the warm up. We gotta warm the hands up. There you go. Got to make the match last. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, well, gets out of a potential baby split situation. Almost a 3-10 leave. Takes the 10 out. Only leaves the 3. Again, this match originally supposed to be at Linden Lanes. And, oh, unfortunate spare miss. May have a little butterflies right now. But, you know, not all storms start off as straight rain. You know, little drizzles. And right now, th there might be some raindrops. Shout out to the adaptability of both these competitors because Lyndon Lanes was supposed to be the original host, some scheduling issues, and then we're here. But they're, they're working it out. They're fighting. Right now, the challenger looking at a bucket situation. Two, four, five, eight. Let's see, make the conversion. Looks good, and no problem on that bucket conversion. Likes it and mm. so we got three and a possible. So Julio right now hasn't really looked confident on his first uh, two corner pin shots. Let's see if um, those are two good warm ups and let's see if it shows him now. And no, still not very comfortable. I don't know. Uh, I understand. I understand. <laughs> oh, man. And there you go. Some of the best action you will ever see. Welterweight action here at the UBA's Underground Bowling Association. It's the Northeast Welterweights. And, oh, a little FaceTime. So avoids a, a really, really nasty split ahead by a decent amount. And no problem on a, on a spare conversion there. And, and exactly, and he provides us all a little time just to, just to eat a little more. Appreciate that, you know, you sacrificing a shot just so we can have a little more, a little more food time. 
all the shots except for those strikes. <laughs> and oh man. Yeah. And take, taking out taking out the four pin, leaving the two five. That ball taking a little while to get there, just laboring. You know that ball's got to work. There you go, and great shot by the challenger, converting the spare. Anything can happen. Right now, he's trying to avoid this potential first game murder. You know, because it is the season for murder. Oh, speaking of murder season. <laughs> Uh, we, we have a special guest here on commentary for a little bit. Uh, par part of the reigning and defending champions of the UBA. Mush, Dejan Mush Smith. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? That's right, man. Everybody right. enjoying this match? Oh, oh, well, you know what? It all depends on what kind of bowling fan you are. If you enjoy, if you enjoy sparing and action and what will they leave next, you can get that purely here. Head to head, 199 and under action. Now, we were all there at one point. Yeah. Watching these guys here throw the ball, defend their titles, does it take you back to when you were first learning and um, before you got to the point where you are now? Um, yeah, of course. You know, you always, it's, you always never, uh, you always watch the younger, you know, the, the younger, the, the lower bowlers. You try to always try to help. We're all young at heart. We're all young at heart. You know, you always got to watch the, you know, always try to help out if you can. Mm -hmm. That's what I try to do, help out when I can, if I can. A little advice here and there, it'll hurt. And words. Now, now, speaking of your opinion, what, what's your opinion of your match that you have coming up tomorrow at Carolia against the Garden Foundation? I'm pretty sure you got a lot of respect for those guys. Yeah, it's going to be 24-16, murdering. So we're just putting numbers out there? So 16 murdering. You know, Muhammad Ali used to always call around. He's going to knock somebody out. So are you that Ali? Got to be, yeah, of course, yeah, it's got to be. Go. Got to be. We, we, we're going back to back, Sean right. We're going to go back to back. No, that's, that's, I'm that's the whole thing. thing. I'm calling the whole and, thing. And Drake going to perform at the performance? I'm going I'm to I'm fly him in. You going to fly him in? Fly him in. Yeah, we're going to go back to back. I'll see back to back in my future. Which team do you think you're going to see in the finals? Um, I didn't look at the whole playoff bracket or not yet, but I believe it can work out to be us and exit wounds, if I'm not mistaken. I think that may be that be a sick final. All right. you know, there's a lot of potentials there, and there's also that wild card. City Morgan's been doing their thing, man. I don't know. Ooh. They got, they got, a, they got the tough round. They got the rough draw to start, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't they got outrage to start? Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, dead. <laughs> they did. Hey, I, I don't so, see that. So, 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 so you're saying that it's already a wrap for City Morgue, and I and I hope they're hearing this. They got, that's a tough team. I'm ready to freaking tough team. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to surprise me. City Morgue got to surprise me in that match. Oh man. Well, oh. speaking of surprise, let's, you're full of surprises here at the welterweight match right now. Julio up. One, I'm uh, sorry, 182 to 151. But he steals a practice shot, so that's all right. So it gets a better look. And trust me, and it's almost like when you spill, you know, a little soda on the floor to get, you try to steal a timeout. Uh, now, I want to take the time to acknowledge um, both. I'm oh, sorry. So I want to let's take the time to acknowledge these welterweight combatants. You know, if you're 199 and under, and you wanna and you wanna really try to see if you could test yourself against the bowlers in your average range. If you feel you're getting better, and you like that one-on-one -on -one action, and hey, give it a shot. And. Ooh, that practice shot paid dividends. So Anthony Morales looking to give himself a little, a little boost. 151 start in game one. Sicario, the sniper himself, finishing 182. So the, fill, the filling out process is over. Let's see if now we can get some, some power punches. And nope, it looks like, it looks like, um, Anthony Morales is already warmed up, and um, Sicario may still be stretching right now. He's still he's still in the stretch room. He didn't he didn't get on the weights yet.
Let's see. We don't. Let's make sure we don't tomahawk chop this. Even though he's with the tribe, baby tribe, and oh, he almost scalped it. All right. Right now, Julio looking to the bag, and how ironic. We said he's grinding for the green, and why not pull out a little a little green ball myself? If you're gonna go green, go all the way. And playing it tight. Ah. Play, playing tight, playing strong, playing down and in, and just attacking the pocket. Exactly. There you go. You know that. You know they say the best way to make a ten pin is. Uh, don't do it like I do it. <laughs> That's the best way. In your case, don't leave it. Don't leave it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I got about seven balls. Mm -hmm. Which line is there? And that's what's happening. And he was fishing for a line, and I was, and right there. I was on that line earlier. Mm. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot of tap dancing going on. A little savvy on Glover. Well, we're not a Linden, so we can't shoot 290 every day. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know what? We're not a Linden. I, I've heard, I've heard that. I've, yeah. heard, I've heard people shoot 290s. Oh, Linden, Linden is great. I, I've been there one time to bowl, so and uh, it's definitely a nice house, though. I say that. Good. But this is this is probably our first time here. I've never bowled here before, so Very definitely cool. in a, there's an adjustment period to it. And that and that may be the first ten pin make in this, in this match. I think it is. That's yep. an I think it is. Yep. Bush, how you make ten pins? You gotta learn from the good bowlers. Uh, yes, it's still hooking. No, I, I gotta say this. Yeah, now we. Have, we had, listen, we got so many different things here at the welterweight division. In the welterweight division, we have 230 bowlers do guest commentary on these matches. I know. Listen, I'm, I just, I just, I'm happy that they're here to watch. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's like, you know what it is? Like, you know when, when people just flip it through the TV on a random day, weekend day, and there's just nothing to watch, like all the sports are no good, and they're like, well, screw it. Let's watch some welterweights bowl right now. And then it ends up being the best contest you've ever seen. You get surprised. You get surprised. Sometimes you see I didn't even get that, and I was on a cruiserweight. Cruiserweights didn't even get that kind of love. Welterweight's getting love, man. Much coming down just specifically just to see this match because the odds, you know, the odds are crazy. Attacking the outside, and and it comes back with, with a lot of slack. And right now, six. And that's six. Yeah, I know he wishes that six was a mix. So we have the one, two, five, ten. I'm sorry, one, yeah, one, two, eight, ten. My apologies, one, two, eight, ten. I don't want to get blasted for not knowing my pins. And I know that Julio wishes that he could, he didn't leave that. Those are, those are pins that he did not want to see in that combination. And right now he's going to find the best way to make that spare. And he's going to find out that the best way to make that spare is not to Leo. Well, he didn't leave it. But he left something else. But it's not a split. But it is choppable. And right now the sniper needs to basically put some oil in that rifle because there's some there's a little bit of rust in his in his shots. And is he gonna be a rust and he's and this sniper is rusty. And how ironic. You, you see the, indig the indigenous individual on his jersey, and he just tomahawk chopped that spare. I know. That is amazing. That's called living what you spit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And a pocket 510. Pocket 510. Obviously, a lot of deflection on there. No, you will not see that in a heavyweight match, or maybe you will, but you know what? You will not be as thrilled as you are now. Well, to wait. Grinding for the green. And 
Very high on the head, almost crosses over and hits Jersey. I'm sorry, I'm in Jersey. So it hit Brooklyn. Like, you know what? Let me have an onion ring. You gotta do a lot of posing here. Time to stay still. Hey, if you wanna watch strikes, you watch the heavyweights. You wanna watch bowling? And you're gonna watch the world to weights and you're gonna learn a thing or two on what to leave, maybe what not to leave, how to make certain spears. Pray that you don't leave certain spears. And he mixes it out and he pushes the seven pin out. Right now, Julio, the champion, is a little behind in pins. Nothing that he can't make up. It can swing either way. No one is really running away with any match. Every match has come down to the wire, down to who does not make certain mistakes. And there was no mistake on that sixth frame. And we got our first double of game two. One thing. Uh huh. I'm standing back here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm standing here from the analyst role, mm -hmm. I'm looking at myself and I'm going, what the hell is Sicario doing? <laughs> you know See? what I mean? So. Mm. Right, Shoot, I know what Mr. Morales was doing there. He was he was storming in that pocket right there. Yeah. He's, and he's looking to respond and responds very well to the double that was just thrown by the champion. One thing about welterweight is there's going to be those key frames and those occasional strings that'll truly make things interesting. And then it makes those spares mean a whole lot more when you're, the, when you're following them with strikes. And, oh, and what should have been a double, unfortunately, was a flush hit, but a seven pin leave. I like the change that Anthony Morales is, is doing on the lanes. Sticking with the same surface that gave him that, that unfortunate 5-10 leave when it deflected into the pocket and didn't really finish through. And he found a, he found a little an angle and a, and a different release point and timed it a little more and just got a little more into the pocket. Got a little deeper in there. And Julio up. And wow. And you could hear him say on lane 26, he liked that. And I can see why. It was a high flush hit, but that is another strong leave. A high flush 4 9, or I call it the San Francisco, because the 49ers are standing right in front of you. And you have to attack it by clipping the four and sliding it over and. Would have been a big spare, and right now, an amazing opportunity for the challenger who lost in game one, 182 to 151, to definitely shift it, shift the pendulum. And we will definitely see a one to one, maybe a, a one to one result for the first two games. There was already a sweep that happened earlier for the heavyweight championship, and I think Julio wants to try to do that same thing. But three hiccups, three opens for Sicario himself. And only one blemish on the scoreboard for Anthony Morales. And he's trying to make that spare mean something. And that should be a triple, but it's a strike. It's a spare. It's another strike. Potential 215 finish for Anthony Morales and potential 203 finish for Julio Sicario Hernandez. Now Sicario needs to clean that sniper rifle and dust it off and really come out of retirement. He needs to do something rather John Wickish and fight back. And the seven pin fights back. So still no doubles for Anthony Morales, but clean, a lot more clean frames. 
important spares. This spare also being important, gets out early and walks and takes a little walk and it hits its target. And I know that's gotta make the sniper jealous to watch someone snipe their target, seeing right now his targets have been running away from him. And I'm pretty sure he would like to strike out and, and run away with this game to make it a 2-0 advantage over the challenger. And let's see if he can carry. And the seven pin, nope. Seven pin gets a little, a little, a little backhand, a little backhand, a little, a little. Where's my money? Slap. So the tide has shifted with that double and with that tap. Julio doubles. Anthony taps. Anthony has a potential 195, and Julio has a potential 203. So he needs this hit, and he gets the hit. Grinding it out like a true champion. One of the toughest welterweights on this list. In the North and potentially in the South. He's looking to prove that, but he has to get through this. And the only way to get to that is to focus on this. And let's see if he can do this and that on the second ball in the 10th. And oh, the seven pin right there. Seven pin just in an argumentative mood, just for no reason. Just, just answering the phone angry. And hanging up after, after it asks whose is it. And looking to convert the seven pin. Took a little while to get there, but it got there. And 192 finish. So count is very important here. All three will give him, will, oh, all three will give Anthony. And that ball took a little while to get there. And, and and it looks like you're still here. I'm still, I, I shouldn't have won that game. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little rough for, I mean, that's just an adjustment period. Hi! Oh, my daughter's here. Hi, baby. Hi! And the, and the tribe is here. The beloved tribe is here. The actual, the actual tribe is showing up. Yeah, the beloved tribe. All right, and looking for an area check. And Anthony Morales looking to see what, what could have potentially been there. Looking through the different options in his bag. For the most part, was in the driver's seat for that. And, and, and narrowly escaping the second game, the champion himself, Julio Hernandez. And he says it in the background, he should have lost this game. But he did not. And right now he is up two games to nothing. I want to thank all of you that's over here watching with us, watching live, watching the best of seven of the welterweight division for their Northeast Championship. Both, both these bowlers grinding for the green. And Julio up. Oh, as soon as the tribe walks in, he had to strike. And that was a perfect example of the kind of heart that you're going to see displayed in these matches. Yes, I, like right now, 
Yeah, what I got. I won the belt tonight. So this is like my ninth title defense. The ninth title defense. So it, it's, 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 you got to have heart. Mm -hmm. You got to roll with the punches here. You know, some people are the first time maybe they get nervous or something like that. You know, they want to call you out, whatever it is that they use to motivate themselves. Mm -hmm. but you got to have heart, you know. But I, I got to start closing some boxes up, man. And he, and your opponent closed a lot more frames. He just had some unfortunate moments. Yeah. Very similar to this, what we just saw on lane 25, yeah, yeah. you know, leaving the 2 4 10. Listen, I'll take all those breaks. They'll make it easier for me. I'll take all those breaks right now. Uh, ain't no, ain't no give these backs. No, ain't no give backs. That's what I'm trying to almost. I'm trying to see if I can, you know, it looks like if you can run two or three together right now with the way the lanes are, that you might be able to pull it off. But if you can't make the spares right now for us, we can't. Again, we don't strike like the heavy. Hey, great point. So, I like, to, I like to call this the division of essence. This is the essence division. Going back to essentially what bowling is about. Closing frames. Not always striking. And let's see if he can put his frames together. And, and how poetic. He made mention of the spare shooting and, and, and the, the closing of frames. And the champion getting a little inspiration from from his legacy. <laughs> Basically saying, if you can't shoot, maybe I can, because I, I haven't been able to snipe these 10 pins that well. But let's see if he's leaped. He, yep, he's loaded. That's all it took. Oh, and there we go. Shot number one. Champion letting the ball roll and his last three shots have looked great. He looks like he's well, basically getting comfortable. He said he said before he has never thrown a ball in his house. He took a little tour of the lanes in game one, and now he's feel comfortable. I think he's gonna try to put his feet up. And the lanes game two. Oh, we're not putting our feet up. We're gonna have to put our foot down on the gas pedal. Oh, gas low. pedal. And you know what? Hey, 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 and that, hey, hey, step on the gas and start to drive. And he really, and he drove through the pins on that third frame. Yeah, I like, I like the way the left lane looks right now. I think that's it. The right lane, mm. for some reason, I can't, I can't carry through. Mm. The last shot, I pushed a little too wide. And, and that show said that everything's playing kind of even. No, it is. Because um, you saw in earlier in, yeah. the, in the heavyweight match, the left lane was just, well, yeah. it was just being nasty. It was, it was. The left lane was just nasty. Uh, to Anthony Morales on that shot. Where, where, uh, where Mike was when he was bowling earlier, too. He might be in the same area. He's kind of trying to play that real tight line. I'm kind of trying to stay away from that. Um, trying to get a little bit more around the ball, you know, a little more swing into it. Um, right? So far, it's working. Let's see how it goes. Hey. Reading the lanes is extremely important. Every single time you release a shot, and for every shot that you do, you know, you definitely have to pay attention. It's very easy to get into a rhythm, start throwing it, start walking away, but there could be slight changes that you never notice from frame to frame. And it's important to stay focused, especially, like I said, best of seven. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm, there you go. And a little, little, little bit of a mix. How's it tasting? Stirring it up? A little bit? Mm. Shout out to all athletes that may be potentially watching this on YouTube. There we go. Julio likes that one off the hand. And he did, he did make mention that that the left lane, the left lane is is, is his, well, his second main thing. I can't say the left lane is his main thing, because I'm standing next to his main thing. Anyway. And gets outside a little early. He's going to have to hurry. And doesn't come off the hand very well, but uh, very forgiving with an eight count. So it looked like it could have been a six count. He would have lost a little more wood. And he needs to step on the gas. 
or either that or hope that the champion takes a rest. Stay, staying on top of every spare, staying on top of every single frame. There will be times where you will see some strikes. And if they can be strung together, they are big. And that looks like it's gonna come up nice and comes up fast, high, and unfortunately leaves the 4-7-10. Well, it seems that lane 25 is being extremely monogamous to the, to the champion. It is not giving it up to anyone else except him. Sicario, Julio Hernandez right now, he is getting it. He's starting to feel it. He is, like I said, he's getting really, really comfortable. He's already up 2-0. He is not trying to take this lead for granted. He's trying to make sure that, that no Cinderella stories happen. And he gets a inside, and he finds a little oil. And, and left lane loves you, and you love it back. Yeah? So, you might as well you're gonna take the left lane home with you. Uh, if, if they're left, you're gonna have to stack. <laughs> I know it's probably gonna be expensive to kind of get all the, the wood off and maybe the gutter caps. I may take the pins with me too, and if they'll let me take the design in the back, I'll take that too. I mean, no one's gonna want the left lane anymore after you beat it up so bad. No, no. Listen, right now she's giving it up like that. <laughs> it's like she just laying. It's like she, you came home from work, she just laying there. No, she came. She came. I came home from work, and she was ready. That's how. That is. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the perker. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. And I think he just hit Julio's left lane. And I think she, she gave it up. She gave it up to him from the back. Julio looking at a potential 280 max. And mixes it up. He keeps mixing the. He's mixing. He's you're mixing the pot, like 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 you on snowfall. <laughs> Little snowfall action, as he keeps mixing up the pot. He says sometimes you gotta tickle it. You don't you don't just run up in there. And let's see if he's gonna keep running for 280. And it looks like it looks like Julio is, is is trying to wrap it up over here. I'm, Pause. I'm doing exactly what I said. Nobody likes to see. Which is not what I want. I, know. I apologize. You, I'm not supposed you, to go like a heavyweight. No, yeah, you're a poser. But I'm a poser. <laughs> you're a poser. You're phony. You say you're striking like a heavyweight, huh? Just one game. Sometimes you get one out of there. But when the left lane's giving it up like this right now, yeah, hey. I mean. Any any heavy any heavyweights you think you can give the business to out here? Oh man, listen, honestly, yeah, I said it. It's not. It, it, <laughs> I'm a confident guy. I'm not gonna back down. You know, uh, to be honest, anybody could get it anytime, any day. It depends on how well people bowl. You know, mm. even you look at today's match. You know, those guys are legitimately good, 230. But scenarios play out. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. You're having a bad day. You might have an injury that you know about. You never know. And speaking of bad day. Like I said, I could definitely talk a game like I'm 230 or like I'm one of them heavyweights. I'm, Eventually, that's the plan. I want to jump up that way. Well, speak, speaking of a, a, a bad a bad day, uh, it looks like a bad day because it looks like we're about to experience a, a classic in the UBA, the stretchy. Let's see. Let's see. Still got to get the hopes up. 
Julio is on 280 max, and his opponent just shot 155. Even though he's experienced in a bad day, he has to try to weather the storm for four straight games because the champ is up 3-0. And we might, we might see a little stretchy. Um, Amy, um, are you mad about sitting back and watching a stretchy? No. <laughs> I mean, who, who wants to just watch? Anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I am going to ask you this. Is there any welterweight north or south that you think your husband cannot beat? Well, I'm putting it like this. I think he may be maybe top three welterweight all around. Mm -hmm. I gotta give, I gotta give number one right now to some, some my guy Julio. Maybe, maybe number two might be the, the, the South welterweight champion. My boy Will Wannan, former teammate on Suicide Squad. So I've I seen him in action. I'm trying to think who will be the third, third, the third best welterweight. Maybe you guys, some of you guys in the comments can say who you think will be the third best welterweight or who you think your top three is. I think you'd be all right on this. <laughs> so right now, we have a a a hundred pin. Uh, we we'll have a stretchy, a classic UBA stretchy. Back in the day when you guys used to side bet, stretchies paid double. Two seventy nine to one fifty five, hell of a statement. Um, so while while we while we're waiting, we waiting? We got a break now if you get past this match, even though you're in the driver's seat, yeah, do you, you know who's next on your on your on your plate, right? For a battle bowl or or in uh in September. Well, how about battle bowl? For battle bowl, I think it. it I know Will Wannan had won the belt. He sent me a message. He squad. Me, squad, for sure. He sent me a message. He wanted me to uh, meet him at Battle Bowl, but I don't know if he won or if he lost. I think if he lost, then it would probably be Kareem Muhammad. But we, we bowled, actually. We bowled down at Mega Bowl. So, okay. So this will be uh, a rematch mm. at Battle Bowl. So either or. If it's Will, if it's, if it's Kareem, for some reason it's not somebody from the South because they're both from New York, technically. <laughs> so. I mean, well, hey, you know, that, that's provided that you get past the match. I mean, you still got one. You still I'm not done yet. Not done yet. Yep. Hmm. What's going on? Hey, uh, what's going on? Hey, so what? What do you think? What challenge do you think you're experiencing on the lane? Um, no excuses. I'm not carrying. Mm -hmm. Making little frugal mistakes. The mm -hmm. champ, the champ, doing what he do best. Mm -hmm. He got. He's um, he's up three zero. It is what it is. No excuses. Yeah, but it's not over because no, you know. It's not over. I'm gonna exactly. try my best. Yeah, it's not over. But listen, oh, listen. All, all all it takes is one moment. Yes, it is. And I'm gonna try to get it now. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna try my best. All right. Yeah, that's right. You gotta show heart. This is the division of heart, right here. This is all about heart. Yes, we just saw an amazing game from Julio. 279, second highest game, championship game shot of the day. Julio is indeed one of the tougher welterweights. Right there sitting on what I like to call that fine line. Right there in the 190s. A consistent 190. People see bowlers with certain averages and think they just cannot bowl. But the contrary, they understand the game just just fine and very well. 
They just do not strike more than certain people, but they do shoot spears when they need them. And Anthony Morales um, struggling in the first three games had a really, really good look in game two. He just had some unfortunate breaks. And even Julio saying that he knows that he shouldn't have won game two. And, it definitely, and he definitely woke up in game three. Realizing that he was om that he was almost even one one, and he got a gift of being up by two. I guess he decided that he should wake up. Julio definitely woke up when he saw opportunity. And that's what it comes down to: being able to recognize a window and jump and jump right through it while it's open. Both bowlers looking to represent their franchise. Both bowlers looking to represent their franchise, walk on the battle bowl with with the Northeast welterweight champion. champion looking to potentially defend his title in a 4-0 sweep which would be the second sweep that we see of the day if it happens again anything can happen and Julio still feeling good still feeling like he's in the same groove that he was in game in game three on the right lane and ooh, 10 pin right now with a little boxing gloves on it and it definitely fights back. Julio's 10 pin percentage has not been good today. This will be the second consecutive 10 pin that he has made in about five tries. And the right and, and pulls the rifle back out. He's got it on him. So looking just like game three. Tapped in the second in the second frame. You can see this in basically almost goes sheet. And same exact situation. Strike and a tap. A seven pin lead. For Anthony Morales in the second frame, and for the second frame was a 10 pin and a spare conversion for Sicario. And looking forward to hook. And it runs off the lane, and that could hurt. Every single spare matters. Frustration may be getting ready to set in.
And now, the seven pin before stood up. And he was not able to convert that. Ball ran off the lane. Let's see if the 10 pin can be a little more cooperative for him. Let's see if he can throw good enough. And it looks like it might get there. And no, back to back misses. Seven pin as well as the 10 both run away and slip, and slip out of his grasp. Gonna jump all over this and yes. He Julio is trying <laughs> Julio right now is being so faithful to Elaine that's loving him. <laughs> but he is sneak he's sneaking next door right now. Let's see what's gonna happen when he sneaks next door. He's looking to make it a thruple. And it's not a throuple. Nope, nope. Right lane is, wants nothing to do with the situation. So after two, two consecutive spare misses, open frames by Anthony Morales. Let's see if it's contagious. And it is not contagious. Matter of fact, he is making it his business to do what he's supposed to do, and that's snipe out. Snipe out every single corner pin. It seems that you got your um, sniper rifle working again. Yeah, it takes a while. Sometimes it changes. A little uh, old. 50% 10 pin, 10 pin conversion rate right now. That, that's better than it usually is. <laughs> and you know. In Delaware, Delaware, I think what I, I, I had a. Uh, I had a well three match in Delaware. I was bowling Cheryl Metro. And I think I missed like four seven pins. Shout out to the boss. I miss oh, boss lady. Shout out to the boss lady. And I think I missed about four or five seven pins over there. I was just, they were laughing at me over there too. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Well, I know he's thinking, what do we? What does he have to do, especially for for those corner pins? Because he missed the seven and the ten. Yeah, I, I mean, Mush told me take the hand out of it a little bit and you'll be fine, and it's kind of what I did. Uh, and, take and he probably should have took a little more hand out of that one. That one bit a little earlier. It looked like he balled up. Uh, I think he was throwing like a twist or something earlier. And now he's throwing, I think that's an electrified. But the lanes, the line that he's playing is just so tight. That's why, like I said, I'm trying to play the outside and kind of having it roll in. Oh, man. And, that, and that's an unfortunate chop. Uh, I, think, think he, I, think, I think he's defeated now. Uh, just mentally, it wears on you. Mm. No. Yeah, great point being made by the champion. Um, once you start choosing wrong surfaces at wrong times, a lot of times you're making the right decisions, but at the wrong times, and it's giving you the wrong result. And, and staying the course, and sometimes working with what will get you the best result, even if it is a good shot or a bad shot. That one was a great shot, so there was no way to question anything on that. And that lane right there, it's, it's safe to say that we might put that lane on the lease. I think he wants to take that lane home. Let him keep that lane. I don't know. Well, where's he going to put it? Like, Up his ass. <laughs> and there you go. We call, she calls that real estate. No, this is, not, this is actually um, you know, the match for the, for the welterweight belt. Uh huh. And right now, that was the first double in this game. No, oh. So for all those who are watching and wondering what happened, it was set for for a, a three-game set, and they had to turn everything back on uh, for the rest of the game. It's a best of seven. Speaking of seven, seven pin, still that seven pin right now is just being super defiant. St St standing up for all equal rights of every corner pin that you ever see. <laughs> and the last seven pin got away from Anthony Morales. Let's see if this one is going to stay. And that does, a lot, that does a lot for the psyche to have a couple opens and then at least be halfway through and then kind of correct it. Now, the one thing that he needs to happen is he needs to, well, to maybe get in the champ's head he needs to find a way to strike out. 
and so we can walk. Because any single thing could happen in one frame. All right, there, going for a drive, tries to drive it in. Looks like he wants it a little too much. Attacking potentially with the wrong surface and the wrong angle. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you think he'd be in a uh, welterweight? Uh, you think he'll be a welterweight next uh, next year? Julio. Uh, yeah, Julio. Do you think he'll be a welterweight next year? Could potential. Could could potentially be. Who's asking? I am. <laughs> are are you are you saying that you think it's time for you to grind for the green? No 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 no. He just won't be in this division next year. I doubt it. I mean, well, he is having a good day. He's having a very good day. He's had plenty of them. Hey, like I said, with welterweights, it's not that we don't – well, that, well, I'm a cruiserweight, but it's not that they don't understand the game. They can hit the pocket just like any other guy that's 230. It's all about whether or not they strike more. Okay. I've had I've had good days with people question if I should be heavyweight, and now I'm I'm behind the camera right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it happened to Shaq, it happened to Barkley. Yes. And he did not crash the boards on that shot. We retire. I mean, it's it's no reason to crash the board now. Mm -hmm. We understand. We understand the game. Yeah. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just stick to this part of the game. You're gonna call me Sean Dyke Sharp. <laughs> Uh, hopefully he doesn't skip by this by the spear right here. Just... And he, is he gonna skip it? No, nah, he doesn't skip it. So, and it... he has to make it look like you know something. He can't completely sandbag. Well, allegations, allegations, <laughs> allegations. <laughs> Now, so now, if your guy strikes out, does he have sand on his feet? No, that means he got a good couple of frames, and we're going home. <laughs> going home like that, just to start the car? Yes. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> That's a good ending. That would have kicked you out the car. <laughs> well... It seems that the gas is running close to E for Anthony for Anthony Morales. And you know what? Not to say that it's over because anything could happen, but it's going in the direction and it's shifting for the champion on a potential 4-0 sweep. And not going to go down quietly. Still going to make a spare because a lot can happen in two frames. With this guy, I don't think so. He, he'll strike this frame and open the next frame. So, prediction for the chance to have a negative read on one of his shots. And, and he has a negative read on the first shot. And he'll open the second shot in the 10th frame. Which can happen to anybody. It could happen to anybody. And the sniper is going to make that spare. And yes, converts it. The, the 610 is converted. And I believe that is game, set, and match. And looking to finish strong. Looking to finish strong on the right lane. Yes, absolutely. As he should. Let's see if he does. And I think the 10 pin is going to fight back. No. Wrong pin. It was the 9. 9 pin. Good yeah. 9 pin. Good 9 pin. Don't run past it. No. no even, if he runs even if he runs past it, it's still a game, set, match. Absolutely. But if he runs past it on camera, you're on him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Roscoe's about to get his stuff. I was like, what? Absolutely. Still here. What's, oh, 
Hold up, what's, what did this go up to? What's the, 199. And under. Nah, he needs to go up. Yeah. He needs to go up. Come on, come on, come on. We got to be serious here, man. This is reality. But, you know. And who and who will escape him? 190. Uh, potential 173 max. It is a 4-0 sweep for the champion, and he still has the title. And we are going to get some words with the champ. Well, well, well. Here. Still here? Still here. Uh, still here. Nine, nine title defenses in. Still here. Wait, did you just say nine title nine. defenses? Nine title defenses in a row. There we go. No? All right. Should, should we be called? We win against the South champ in March. Yeah, I was say, um, so that, so that'd be 10. That'd be 10. Be 10. And, so, and what a dynasty it would be if your 10th victory is against the South welterweight champion. I, listen, that's, I'm all here for that. I'm all here for that. I think if I can do that, then I think next season I may wind up jumping up at launch. I'll, I'll give this up and I'll, I'll jump into the cruiserweight ranks, make my way up there. And you know that, and that will be your first um, cruiserweight attempt. You know? yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. Hey, yeah. if you came in here, we were able to. I, I won this belt three times. I'm a three-time champ. The first two times I never got to defend it. The third time around, you know, experience, you get better. Uh, and, you know, I made some changes with my bowling balls. Mm. And, and, you know, all of a sudden, hey, we're nine, ten title defenses in. Why not Why not go here? We're not going to stay right here. We're going to shoot for the stars, you know? No, absolutely. And I was saying that the, the one main thing about this division is just because you see the averages, it doesn't mean the individuals don't necessarily know how to bowl. They do know how to bowl. They, they, they spare a lot more than they strike, and, there's an, and it's all about... The essence of bowling, filling up boxes, you know, you know, cleaning frames up, keeping the house clean. Listen, it, 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 I learned from the first two times that you don't underestimate anybody that chooses to do this. That's one. You know, we do travel far. You know, we go through what we go through. But one, you make a lot of friendships, and that's kind of what UBA is all about, that, that family aspect. We get to come in here. We get to talk trash, talk a little shit. But... You know, you don't understand it. Anybody can come out here and bowl. When they, whether it's the people from Connecticut, the people from Jersey, Delaware, you go down south, the people down in the Carolinas, you know, they they're they're everywhere, and we can all we can all throw down. It don't matter what average we're at, honestly. You know. Yeah. You know, and, that's, and I and I saw that great 279 game that you had. It looked like you finally got comfortable. I know it took you about two games to really find it. Yeah. Um, what changed for you on the lanes, and what were you noticing that made that helped you make any decisions that you did during the match? Well, I noticed that that left lane was amazing for me. <laughs> the left lane gave it up so amazing. I just, if, if you saw me get down on the knee, because that was because I just proposed to it. Yeah. And, and she clearly said no, because she didn't give me nothing after that. So that, that's how rejection feels. Um, I'm heartbroken. But uh, also championship heart. That's one of the things. Even when I've been up 3-0 in lost matches. So I know what that's like. Yeah. That's why I said, keep your foot on the gas pedal. Yeah. The right lane just got a little tight, you know, and I think it may have been just his line. His line was, he was playing real tight the whole day. I guess as a transition, it created a line there, just held, and just kind of used it to my advantage, made my adjustments, and was able to close more boxes than him. That's all it was. Hey, and, and, and there it is, and that's why you were the three-time World Series champion. And when you do move up, um, any cruiserweight you'll be excited to, to face? All of them, because they're all, listen, the average show that they're all better than me. So I'm always up for the challenge, you know? You asked me before if there's any heavyweights. I'm not going to back down. I'm here. I'm Sicario. Whoever they put in front of me, listen, it's going to be a heck of a match. You're going to know who I am afterwards. And, and, and that's it. Listen, 10 title defenses, three-time welterweight champ. Why not move up? I see, I know a couple of, Malachi, you're the, you're the champ now, you know? That's the OG. I, I, I want to go for that. I'm going to take a shot at that, too. Why not, right? Why not? We get, and we put on a show for everybody. That's how it goes, hey, you know? Listen, listen. But after now, nah, listen, man, we won, we won Unholy this year. Mm. I won Unholy this year, right? Ten title defenses, three-time multi champ. Well, We're going to keep adding to the resume. But I got no respect on my name. Where is the respect? Let me get a little respect on that, please. Oh, wait, wait. I got 
We got, we got, wait, we got, oh, we got, we got, we got the, we got the challenger here, Anthony Morales, right here. What do you got to say about that? I'll probably be the first one, but there's nothing fake about me. He's the champion for a reason. He defended it that many times for a reason. So if you don't like it, too bad. <laughs> Understand? I had no excuses today. I couldn't get it right. He capitalized. He played his game. He did what he had to do. That's it. End of story. Period. Mm -hmm. So when he moves up to the next level, mm -hmm. I wish him luck. I feel sorry for most of the guys in the division uh. because the guy come for real. And that's it. No excuses. I'm sorry to my team, Jersey Storm. I couldn't get it done, but I'll be back. And congratulations to the champ. Appreciate that, boss. Hey, Appreciate that. comes down to respect, you know? And you know what? We respect and acknowledge what you do. Tribe, baby tribe. Sicario, right there. Started sniping them. Quick shout out. We always sniping them. That's what we do. That's right. Quick shout out. I got to shout out TK's Pro Shop. My boy, Mr. Hammer, out in Yonkers, always. I got to shout out my guy Dino out in the store at Queens, man. Uh, without you guys, let me do what I do, getting, the, getting all the bowling balls and equipment prepared, you know, it, it, it don't go any other way. I wouldn't be holding this belt without you guys, so appreciate it. And shout out to the, to the, to the three or four fans I got out there. <laughs> I think I'll make five. Oh, I got a fan. See, this is why I do it. I do it for you guys, for you five. I appreciate it. Oh, my God. I'm battle ball ready, though. Are you battle ball ready? Absolutely, I'm ready for battle ball. Come on, now. Anyone can get it? Everyone can get it. Free bullets, free shots? Listen, I'm going to bring the extra, I'm bringing the 100 round clips for those. Don't worry. Ooh. 100 round clips for those. Wherever they put in front of me, it's a wrap. Like I said, Will Wannan, Kareem, we can run it back. It's a wrap. All right? Now we're doing it in Delaware. Big stage, biggest stage, biggest stage. Mm -hmm. Don't matter, don't phase me no more. I'm ready. You better be ready. All right. Back to the Bronx, champ. Back to the Bronx. Back to the BX. Now. I'll be over there next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all day.